What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Bravo Zulu Podcast. We're in the studio tonight, uh, solo. Nikki's not with me. It's a, uh, it's lonely. Um, it's just me. Sorry, y'all. But uh, we got. I've been, I've been prepping this one. Um, now that there's a lot of prep work that ever goes into these, right? But uh, last week, might have been two weeks ago now. Tonight, we're finally going to address Tom Brady and his comments about. The military deployment blah 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 right let's get into it right so everyone knows it blew up uh he was on his own uh podcast talking with his co-host and, and and kevin durant and he came out and and made the words that said uh he he he, he thinks of it kind of like going on deployment right so we got the podcast pulled up we're gonna go break this down from his podcast and address everything that was said and uh, spoiler alert, right, if you've been watching or following the Bravo Zulu Facebook page or you happen to be friends with my personal page, um, my hot take is that he's not too wrong, right? He's not that far off base. And if you think of the whole thing and, and just really don't try to put him in your shoes, but really put, like, the experience uh, of, of, like, we could use, quote, unquote, leadership or trying to be the best at your job – then it's relatable. But if that's not you every day, right, and you're just showing up to collect the check, then it, it might not relate to you. So we're going to pick it up. Um, it's him, his co-host, Jim Gray, and they just pulled uh, Kevin Durant, Durant on. And we're going to, like, play a little bit of it and talk about it and uh, uh, pause and go back and forth as we do this. Hopefully uh, nothing happens where, like, they pull this for a copyright or anything like that, right? Because we're, we're doing news right now. This is breaking news. It's analytical uh, that we're talking about, right? So here we go. This is uh, Tom Brady, Jim Gray, and Kevin Durant. And uh, it's about – we're about five minutes away from it. But like I said, we're going to be skipping through this. So uh, bear with us. And, and it's the Let's Go podcast. Yeah, I mean, it's just consistent work every day. You know, season starting. So this is this usually is- the toughest work. Kevin Durant uh, talking. We start to form our team a bit, so I'm excited. You know, it's uh, it's, it's fun getting up. And I don't think they're doing his team um, doing real good right now. Training camp because you know the season right around the corner, and so I just tend to hold myself to a standard every day. There we I go. Know that it's been working for me for this long. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been successful on every team I've been on because I've had a routine. I just try to stick to that, and that produces results. You know, and so. That right there. All right. So we're like I said, we're gonna kinda of break down these five minutes and go over it, right? Um, him Kevin Durant just talking about like him performing the way he does because of routine. That's not unfamiliar, I think, with most military, right? The way you perform starts with your like basic wake or like go to bed routine, wake up routine, get to work routine, right? How many of you listening got a regular scheduled thing that you do? Like your first like me, I wake up, I go use the restroom. I go wash my hands and I immediately brush my teeth, right? There's nothing that throws me out of that unless like an emergency or, or a, like one of the kids or something, right? That is my routine. I try to make sure, and I even try, I make sure that I wake up with enough time between having to wake up kids and, and do this or letting the dog out. The first things I'm doing is using the toilet and brushing my teeth. I, I, there's no movements ahead of that, right? And that starts my day. And I think that's what Kevin Durant right here is talking about is like why he's been able to reach his peaks of greatness that he has in the past, right, is because he has a routine, probably showing up to the gym same time, right, every day, this or that, right? It's just it's clockwork, right? So we're, let, let's get back into just it. try to stay locked in with my teammates mm-hmm. and stay on the same page with my coaches, but at the same time really- – Oh, another one of those routines. We're going to get real, uh, real uh, fucking Joe around here, right? Like a routine of having quarters every morning, same time, same place, right? Uniform of the day, right? With your teammates, your division, your department, whoever it is, right? If you're not having that shit regularly, then it's not routine uh, and you don't get the cohesiveness, right? Uh, just to, just to make sure we're understanding, like, in the military aspect, right? I'm an individual bringing my talent to the group, so I got to be at the top of my game every day. When you're trying to be your best mm-hmm. self. Yeah, go ahead, Jim. happens to be the best in the world. How does yeah, that sometimes. <laughs> oh, it's tough. I don't look at it that way. Um, I feel like I'm mastering my craft. I want to be the best version of myself. Mm. Every time I step on a court, I want to be able to do everything. 
do you not want to be the best version of yourself every time you step onto the deck plates there, Chief? Right? I said, I could turn it up and we could go all the way Joe right now. Right? Because there, it's crazy how many military were out there, right, retired and otherwise, like flaming Tom Brady for what he's about to say in the next three minutes. Right? Which I get it. He's never been on deployment. It's not the same type of sacrifice. He can, everyone's out there, he can quit any time. Yeah, you can too. Go do some drugs. You'll quit, right? Go uh, go tell people that you want to hurt yourself. And I'm not saying in a, in a realistic way. I'm saying you, you can make it up. You can lie about it. Sailors do it, right? I'm not talking about the real problems. I'm talking about sailors lie, make shit up to get out of deployment. I've heard sailors have conversations about just go get pregnant and you'll miss deployment and you could get off the ship. I've heard that from female sailors, right? To other female sailors. So there's ways to quit. It's just, you don't think of it as the same because your sacrifice is a little bit different. And when he quits, it's just quitting a sport, right? And he's already got paid millions or whatever. Right. So let's keep going. Basketball court. Um, so if that, you know, if the best player in the world comes with that, that's cool. But uh, I'm chasing something totally different every day. I wake up to go mm. to the gym. So yeah, it's about perfecting my craft and, and maintaining what I am and also looking for different ways to grow. Ooh, wait, didn't we just get done talking shit for like six weeks about continued growth, at least in the Navy, right? That you should never stop learning. But we're here sitting here blasting. And so no one said anything about Kevin Durant. Right, but this is all just lead up to to give the whole picture of their conversation, right? Tortured by perfection, like Tom, you say perfecting your craft. Do you still think you can improve? Yeah, you should be able to. Let's get four thirty seconds. You know, I think for certain guys, and certainly KD, someone that I always look at. You know, in other sports that has the incredible determination and consistency. You know, mm. I think some people can have discipline for short periods of time. I think anyone could have a good year. Anyone could have a good mm -hmm. three or four years. Maybe. You know, mm -hmm. That just means you have some talent and ability. I think. When mm. Good three or four years. Talent and ability could get you for a good three or four years. But what do you got after that? Right. What are you doing after that to get you to the. Let's say you uh, a young, young chief, young leader. Right. And you, you, you on the, that get it fast path. Right. Three or four years. It's just all talent. You just smart. What are you doing after that? You know, there's people out there, 15 year chief or master chiefs. What well, I think there's a DC someone talks about, like a nine or ten year DC master chief. What's what are they doing for the next ten years to get to twenty? Because three or four is just talent. After that, what is it? What if they go thirty? What they what would they do for the next twenty? Chalk it up and go warrant or go LDO or something because they've already tapped out at the on the enlisted side. You know what I mean? So. Let's keep going, Tom. Players like him, you know, that, you know, I've been watching for a long time. It's the consistency that really sets them apart. Ooh. Obviously, the consistency. Elite performance, but uh -huh. a consistent elite performance is really challenging because there's, there's a lot more that goes into that than just talent. Mm. Yeah, at the end. Mm. A lot more goes into consistency than just talent. They, there's going to be interesting a lot of take, Tom. Interesting get take. You to a certain point, how great you could be year after year and even you know kd thinks about this there's always someone younger and there's always Ooh. something you know it's like almost there's always someone younger there's always someone hungrier you're training them you're teaching them how to beat you right you're giving them all the tools that you never had i hope you are right you're you're old it's not your navy anymore right it's not even my fucking navy it is the third class that works for me it's the first classes that I see running around trying to make chief at, at, you know, between 10 and 13. It's their shit. It ain't mine. I'm on the back side of the, uh, I'm on the back nine going on holes 15 to 18. And really, I'm like on hole 18 here in, in, in two months. But like, I don't mean that that's 18 years. I know there's only 18 holes, whatever. Bad analogy. Let's keep going, Tom. Music, you know, it was great to be a great rapper in 2000, but are you still I thought a that great was a rapper horrible. in 2020? I thought it was a horrible you analogy. The best album of the year year in and year out and are you competing for that and i think that's just a different level of sacrifice in terms of commitment mm. off season you know keeping your body the way it needs to feel and I right so there okay so a different level there's a key word there right different level of sacrifice right um when i joined in 2004 right all the way up to 2010 2013 
right? And I was still making that sacrifice and I had all that talent and I was just running off of that. Am I still able to sacrifice those things the way I did then? But like, can I sacrifice what I did then the way I do now? No, I cannot, right? So it takes a different level of commitment and sacrifice now, right? Right now it takes a commitment of sacrifice away from my family because I back then I didn't have that family, right? I had Nikki, but that was a lot more understanding. She went to work, I went to work, and we came home to each other and nothing else, right? And if we didn't come home to each other because one had overnight work or duty or something, then that was that, and we'd catch up the next time we caught up. And then when we were younger and and – a lot more of what they call that vigor and you know fuck it you know is she come off a night shift yeah we're going to disneyland and we're going to rage all night and we'll sleep in on well she'll sleep in the car ride and you know i'll, I'll sleep i'll just grab a nap somewhere we can't do that anymore it's a different level of sacrifice it's not just talent getting us by anymore right let's keep it going tom i think one thing about kd is i always admire him for his ability to focus on the court because nothing gets in the way of what he's trying to accomplish. Mm. And everyone mm -hmm. knows how competitive he is because it's his personality. You know, one thing I could say about some of the Chiefs I work with is they're focused on the deck plates and that there's nothing going to get in their way. Just for an analogy sake. That's why everyone wants him on the team because he's always going to elevate the other players. So it's just an amazing trait. Mm. See, it gets, and then it gets starting to get tricky, though, as I get is older in age because Ooh. I'm starting to experience. It's starting to get tricky as he gets older. Tell me about it, KD. Experience more as a man outside huh. of me being an athlete. So it's like. What, what, what? Experiencing more as a. I know I'll be talking over him. You'd be like, shut the fuck up, Josh. I could hear him if you didn't talk. But experiencing more as a man as he gets older. That kind of resonates with me. Should resonate with you, whether you're a man or a lady or something else. Right? As you get older and you get more in your life, things start to change. It's like, should I still be this, like. I'm always going to be hungry, but should I still be this, like, every day just immersed in what I'm doing, or should I just continue to keep growing on that side? So it's just like, I want to keep the balance of, like, work and play. Uh, but at the same time, I mean, I'm just so excited to, to... Should he be as immersed? Should you, right, we'll say Chiefs, right, uh, other branches pick, pick probably your E7, you know, your sen senior NCO level, right? Should you be as immersed into it? as you were when you were youthful. Because if you are, one might say you might be doing it wrong because you might be taking it off of uh, that junior sailor's play, that junior uh, service member's play, right? Because you, you're still taking, you're so involved in it still. So how much are you starting to step back and trying to focus on that other things? Remember, what did he say? The work-play balance, right? So now that you've done all that work and all that sacrifice as a younger sailor, Right, and you, you've you gotten some privileges, you know, scary word. Well, can't you step back a minute, enjoy some of those, let let the young bucks learn, let them fail, let them learn through failure, and and teach where you can? Play the game and, like, to go out there and shoot a shot or, like, work on my teammates. So it's, it's definitely been, you know, a mental obstacle of trying to figure out what's the good balance between the two. Jim, can I say something about that? Because sure. it's a good go point, and, you know, and you feel certainly me being 45 now. It's like, do I, I just think the same way? Do I still, I almost look at like a football season like you're going away on deployment. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, my God, Tom. I can't believe you said it. Oh, my God, Tom. What are you doing? How could you ever say the word deployment, Tom? You've never been on one. You're just a football player for 20-something years getting paid millions. Damn it. You broke all of our hearts, Tom. We didn't hate you enough before, but now you're comparing yourself to going on deployment. But why? Let's listen. Yeah, military. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, man, here I go again. And there's only one way to do it. And I think, Jim, we've talked from time to time just about how do you enjoy the certain moments of it, mm. you know? And the reality is, is you can really only be authentic to yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Whatever you mm. may say, oh, man, I want to, you know, make sure I spend a little more time doing this, you know, during – the season. Yeah. The reality yeah. is, is mm -hmm. when it comes down to it, your competitiveness takes over. And as much as you want to have this playful balance with the work yeah. balance, yeah. you're going to end up doing mm. exactly what you've always done, which is why you are who you are. You're going to go, how the f do I get it done? Oh, oh, there it is. Let's go back just a little bit. I think. Do I still shadow like work with my teammates? So it's, it's definitely. 
it, we'll get we'll probably run that back again, right? So you could hear it clearly. Because what I heard was a, a a brief mention of it's like going on deployment, right? Damn, do I want to do this again? You fucking sit there and look at yourself in your own fucking black mirror, right? And you tell me you never was about to go out on deployment and thought to yourself, do I want to fucking do this again? We've all done it. We've all done it. And if you're like, nope, oh, oh I, ne- I never wanted to miss a deployment. It's not that you wanted to miss it. It's just you're thinking, especially when you're at the, I'm, I'm almost 18 years, when you're later longer in the tooth and you've been doing it this will be my seventh deployment you sit there and you scratch your head and you're like fuck do i want to do this well i have to right i can't quit like tom brady but fucking i have to do it but i mean i'm pretty i know i could probably weasel my way out of something i could fucking do something to get my ass fucking kicked right off the deployment who does that right you have a commitment and you show up right been, you know, a mental obstacle is trying to figure out what's the good balance between the two. Jim, can I say something about that? Because sure. it's a good Go point. And, you know, and you feel certainly me being 45 now. It's like, do I, I just think the same way? Do I still, I almost look at like a football season, like you're going away on deployment. Yeah. In the military. Yeah. Yeah. And it's. Yeah. And uh, for everyone, y'all should be in Kevin Durant's ass too, apparently, because he co signed that shit hard. Like, man, here I go again. And here I go again. There's only one way to do it. And I think, Jim, we've talked from time to time just about how do you enjoy the certain moments of it. Come on, people. You telling me that he's not fucking like nailing it on the head? Right? He's never been on deployment, but you've never sat there before and be like, damn, do I want to do it? Because there's only one way to do it. And it's all fucking in. It's you got to go all in for the deployment. You cannot go out there half-assing it because that's how people get hurt, right? That's how bad things happen. That's how you're not on top of your game. That's how you're not taking care of sailors. That's how you're not leading. There's only one way to do it, and it's to be all in. He's just saying that's what it's like him now in his 23rd season, I think, going to go play football again. Does he really want to do it? Well, he said, yeah, fuck it. I really want to do it, and he's sacrificing his family for it, right? Right? And there's only one way for him to do it, and it's to be all in, right? He couldn't just be like, okay, well, you know, um, I I could do this work-life balance because for many of us, it's hard and it's um, not impossible, but it's very hard. Why do you think so many of y'all out there divorced? It wasn't the Navy's fault. Go back and check that episode, right? But you think that it didn't lend to it, that that you weren't able to work life balance good enough, that you weren't giving it everything you had at the job. And that didn't lend to you not being able to give a little bit more back at home. Come on, you know, and the reality is, is you can really only be authentic to yourself, right? Whatever you may say. Oh, there you go. Authentic to yourself. What? Oh man. I want to, you know, make sure I spend a little more time doing this, you know, during the season. Mm. Yeah. The reality yeah. is, is when it comes down to it, mm. your competitiveness takes over. Mm. And as much as you want to have this playful balance with the work yeah. balance, yeah. you're going to end up doing exactly what you've always done, which is why you are who you are. You're yep. going to go, how the f- do I get it done? That's what does it for me right there. Right. You're going to do whatever you're going to do. That's it. That's who, that who you have been. Right. It's not all of a sudden going to change. Right. And unless you, like and that people are like you don't go from being top notch to shit bag, right? You go from top notch, maybe you you know, get off the pedal a little bit, right? But you don't become shit bag. You just become, you know, maybe like mediocre, high mediocre, if you will, right? But when 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 the push on comes to shove and you're the chief sitting there with sailors in front of your face, right, fucking looking at you for answers, you're not you're not checked out because you've never been checked out. Right. So he's sitting there with players looking at him and he's never been able to check out and he's not checking out now. That's all uh, to me. That's all he's fucking saying. He's not saying he's fucking sleeping in a shitty rack like deployment. He's not saying he's getting bombed at or shot at or worried about mines and fucking Chinese coming up, you know, shadowing the fucking ship. Or He's not talking about that. And you guys know he. this is what frustrates me. Oh, my God. Y'all know he's that's not what he's saying. 
But all y'all did was read a fucking headline article like y'all read about everything else. And y'all, I'm using very general terms. If it touches your heart, please like, subscribe, and share it with someone else so it could touch their heart too. All right, give me the finger. Okay. Like, y'all are tripping. Y'all, man, this is the wildest thing. Like, the military, we're supposed to be, we, we, we want to be like, oh, we, we're not going to go woke. We're, we're, we, need to not, we need to stop going woke. So many people out there saying this shit, right? But we just want to cancel Tom Brady all of a sudden because he compared going into his 23rd season like going into a deployment. But he's never experienced a deployment. So how are we going to sit here and say it's not like it because we've never experienced going into a 23rd season, right? Yeah, we never experienced getting fucking paid millions either. So we can't relate. There's, it's, we can't relate to either one. But if you actually listen to what the fuck he's saying, in my opinion, I think there's something there that's like, oh, shit, man. You know what? It's not too unsimilar. I'd be sitting there at the edge of my bed thinking, fuck, I don't want to do this. I got to do this, right? Should I do it? Do I got one more in me? Well, I have to, right? I'm contractually fucking obligated. Well, so is he, except he's got an agent and better fucking lawyers that can get him out of the contract, right? And then at the end of the day, we are who we are, and we're going to look at the problems that are around us in those situations, and, get, and, and, and the good ones out there are going to look at you right now. If You, you know you if you a good one or not. And what are you doing? You're saying, how the fuck do I get this done? Right? How do I get this done? There's a problem in front of you, you and that's who you saying that. Yeah. The reality yeah. is, is when it comes down to it, mm. your competitiveness takes over. And as much as you mm. want to have this playful balance with the work balance, yeah. you you're going to end up doing you want it. exactly what you've always done, which is yep. why you are who you are. You're yep. going to go, how the fuck do I get it done? How the fuck you do know, I get it done? He needs to get it done. And, and but then I look up and just like did I miss a lot of time or shit like it. I mean it's it's a, it's it's weird, but I, I mean I really enjoy like like you said. Then you look up, meaning you get home from deployment and you say, "Fuck, did I miss a lot of time?" Because the kid is like two or three inches taller, right? The kid's walking, your baby's walking now, right? The wife looks better, right? Like all this stuff, life happened. While you were gone and you're thinking, what the fuck did I miss? What was, was it worth it? Should I have? Like I call it hibernating. Like I just, I just go into hibernation mode during the season and just cut everything off. And, and then when I come back outside after the season, it's just like, damn, did I, I did I miss some life pass me by? <laughs> you know what I mean? Did life pass you by on deployment? Did life pass you by? Yeah. Life passes you by on deployment. Right. No matter how many emails and text messages and coffee shop phone calls you make, life is back here, wherever you're at, wherever you left, and it's passing you by and you're not there and kids remember it. Right. And they grow up with mommy and daddy issues about it. Right. Like, let's see what else they say. I think well, I guess that's a fun battle to go through and that's what we love. That's why we love to do what we do. Absolutely. Tom, you study this quite closely. Um, uh, there's not one person that I think you can go through and, you know, when you certainly, when I look, I think that's about it for the, for, for his podcast. Right. I think we got the gist of what he was, what he was saying, or, or we got the actual from the horse's mouth. Right. And I'm just saying like, he is just ask yourself after you listen to that, like, just really think about like, is he that far off about how you have felt through your career about going on deployment? Why can't he feel that way about just going into a season? Is is it only because he used deployment and, and he's never served and never been on deployment, so it makes you feel some kind of way? But if you break it down like I just broke it down for you, can you see some of the similarities maybe, right? Or is that just because he's a sports ball player getting paid millions that, no, he shouldn't even fucking say the word deployment. You know, fuck him. Can't even sniff at the word. And in fact, he should go do USO tours when he retires until his fucking death to make up for it for all the service members forever thinking that going into a season is comparable to a deployment. Right? I mean, you tell me. Let me know in the comments down below on the YouTube. Let me know. Uh, you could drop me an email. You could leave comments on Spotify if that's where you're listening. And if you're on Apple, leave me a review. Five stars is a greatly appreciated. Anything else? You know, DM me. Let me know on the side. Don't give me anything less than five stars. All jokes, all right? 
kind of. Don't leave me five stars unless you really think so. If not, cool. Um, just think about it, people. Come on. Like, we really canceling Tom Brady over this shit. Now, he's already made his apology speech and all that, and I didn't even pay attention to it because, again, after I, I read it and then I came here to listen to it, and I was like, well, yeah, I mean, when you listen to that, well, you know, five minutes of it, it kind of makes sense, right? Yeah, he hasn't lived in that rack and been on the seas and made that kind of sacrifice, right? But, I mean, look at him now. He's already losing his fucking wife and his family, Right? Because why? Because he chose to go make another deployment. How many of you out there have lost your families because you chose to go back to sea? Because you chose to go on another deployment? Because you chose to stay late time and time again? And that was a contributing, maybe not all the factor. We, we again go back and check out the military divorce episode about ten back, right? But it was a contributing factor, right? to why you may not be married anymore. His contributing factor was him choosing to go into another season and, you know, make that sacrifice. It's all choices. It's your own, right? But anyways, uh, other than that, yo, thanks for tuning in. Again, uh, we'll have some new uh, podcasts coming up. And don't forget, you know, for more information on how you can support the podcast, please visit us at anchor.fm backslash bravazulu podcast. The information, views, and opinions expressed in this podcast are solely myself, Joshua Moore, and the individuals involved and do not necessarily represent the DOD, DORN, or those of the respected institutions or organizations. And we out.